people start to predict that Bitcoin will reach a million dollars in net value, Thailand is looking to greenlight STOs and a nine-year-old is selling his art for Bitcoin. Let's start the show. Welcome back to Crypto Global News. Please make sure you hit the subscribe and also notifications buttons so you don't miss an episode. I'm Edward and we're going to be bringing you the news from the world of cryptocurrency now three times a week on Sundays, Tuesdays and also Thursdays. If you're in Los Angeles, each episode will be live at 2 p.m. your time. If you're in New York, it's a 5 p.m. start time for you. And if you're across the Atlantic over in London, the launch time for the show will be 10 p.m. Enjoy today's episode. Bold individuals make bold statements. John McAfee, the founder of software company McAfee Associates, said that he believes that Bitcoin will rise to $1 million in value. And to make things even more interesting, he's actually set a date for this crazy feat to be reached. Mr. McAfee feels it will happen on the 31st of December 2019. Now, as loco as this may seem to many people, John is not alone in this feeling. Lund, vice president of blockchain and digital currencies at IBM, spoke about IBM's latest project, Worldwire Payment Network, also known as XLM, and also Stellar, and the future of Bitcoin. In an interview recently, he said the same, that Bitcoin would hit the $1 million mark. Now, all markets the world over will go through bull and also bear runs. Let's see what the next crypto bull run looks like, and if Mr. McAfee and Mr. Lund's prediction will be realized. Shifting over to Thailand, we're looking at the country's National Legislative Assembly as they've reportedly approved an amendment to the existing Securities and Exchange Act on the 8th of February this year. The amended act is expected to go into effect this year, according to the Deputy Secretary General at the SEC. Now, once this happens, it will be legal for businesses to launch security token offerings, also known as STOs, using blockchain technology. The decree holds that if a financial instrument, like a digital token, fits the definition of a security, then it will be regulated under the act. It's worth noting that last year, Thailand established rules which put clear definitions for the terms cryptocurrencies and digital tokens, hence ending currency versus security token debates. Per the rules, cryptocurrencies are used as a medium for exchanging goods. Will Thailand be the pace setter in Southeast Asia when it comes to the future of blockchain technology? <laughs> The Maltese Ministry for Education and Employment has allied with Learning Machine Group to allow the latter to launch a pilot blockchain solution that would facilitate the issuance of academic certificates. The loss of time and money in the document request and verification process often translates into missed opportunities to the detriment of educational institutions, employers, and the wider societies they function in, said Dr. Dan Hughes, co-founder and COO of Learning Machine at the time this was processed. Following the successful implementation of the program at the nation's Institute of Tourism Studies and Malta College of Arts, Science and Technology. The Maltese government has now signed a memorandum of understanding with Learning Machine for the project's scope to be extended nationwide. If all goes as planned, all institutions of learning in Malta, both private and also government-owned, will be required to issue certificates on the blockchain. In essence, Maltese schools and training centers will be able to take advantage of the immutable properties of blockchain technology to eliminate certificate forgery and other malpractices in the sector. In an attempt to regain its past glory, washed away by the slump in global prices of crude oil, Bahrain, a tiny Asian nation with a population less than 1.7 million people, has revealed big plans to regulate its cryptocurrency industry in a way that would make it easier for distributed ledger technology-based firms to thrive in their region. Now, according to Bloomberg, Bahrain Central Bank has created a cryptocurrency sandbox that allows crypto-linked firms to launch operations in the region, servicing only a limited number of clients. The sandbox makes it easier for firms to enter the region's crypto markets without running afoul of local laws. Given that significant number of nations in the Asian continent, including Japan and South Korea, who have avoided China's stance on crypto, Bahrain's move looks to join a familiar forward-looking series of maneuvers. Let's see how this works for Bahrain in the months and years to come. In our final story for today's news update, a great feel-good story about crypto, showing a softer side of distributed ledger technology. A simple WordPress-powered website called Lightning Pictures is selling unique sketches to anyone around the world. While the above might not sound impressive, the fact that the artist behind the whole thing is a nine-year-old boy called Dennis certainly is. 
And what Dennis loves to do, according to his own website, is drawing computer games and doing Bitcoin stuff with Dad. Apparently, the little fellow really wants to buy a Nintendo Switch. The console, however, retails for about 300 US dollars, and Dennis's father has told him that he has to earn the money himself. And since Dennis loves painting, what better way to earn some money than to sell some unique custom-made sketches? A nine-year-old is looking to raise funds for a video game system by selling his art online for Bitcoin. As my father always said, may you live in interesting times. Many thanks for tuning into today's episode. If you have any thoughts, questions, or comments on this video, or just crypto more generally, just drop us a line in the comments below. For Crypto Global News, I'm Edward. Until next time, you take it easy.